This project focuses on using trajectory optimization to optimize gear ratios for a hopping robot based on a simplified model of the Mini Cheetah platform. The Mini Cheetah was developed by Ben Katz and the Biomedic Robotics Lab as a platform for robust controls research. When designing, a gear ratio of 6 to 1 was selected for the hip and 9.3 to 1 at the knee. These were chosen for impact robustness. We seek to answer the question if we can optimize which gear ratios each joint should have for a specific task. First, we wanted to describe a motor's performance characteristics for those who aren't familiar. A motor's performance characteristics are shown by its torque speed curve, which tells us what torque the motor can produce at a certain speed. The torque speed curve has three limits. The, the upper limit on torque is defined by magnetic saturation of the motor's stator. The blue line or power limit line is defined purely by electromagnetism. And the purple line is the fastest possible speed the motor can spin with no external load, also called the free speed. A gear ratio affects the torque speed curve by shifting all three lines as shown in the figure. We decided to optimize the peak jump height of the mini cheetah. Jumping provides a non-trivial solution as a metric. The max gear ratio won't allow us to jump the highest because of the trade-off with the speed of the motor, while the lowest gear ratio won't lift the leg, so it would be interesting to learn what the optimal gear ratio might be. We began with the one degree of freedom case. We used two state variables, y for the height of the foot and theta for the angle between the horizontal and the knee joint. For simplicity, we constrained the foot to sit under the hip, which made both joint angles equal. In the two degree of freedom case, we added an independent theta at the hip since both joints are now actuated. There are two phases during the jump. First, the stance phase, while the foot is on the ground and actuation can be applied. The second is the flight phase, which is non-actuated. This can be simulated based on projectile motion with the states and actuation from the stance phase as input. Here is our full trajectory optimization. We are maximizing the height, which is calculated from projectile motion. The following constraints are applied to both the hip gear and knee gear, but just shown once for simplicity. We would like to highlight the actuator constraints. There are torque limits, velocity limits, and physics limits to approximate the torque speed curve that Addy mentioned to ensure that the trajectory is physically valid. Here is an animation of our optimal solution in the one degree of freedom case. We looked at gear ratios in the range of 0 to 40. This torque speed curve shows that the optimizer found bang bang control, which is what we expected. Since the two degree of freedom case is much larger, we began with a core search over gear ratios in the range of 1 to 30 with a step size of 2. Once we found the optimal gear ratio to be 9 for both the hip and knee, we performed a finer analysis over the range of 7 to 15 with a step size of 0 0.5. Here we found the optimal ratio to be 9.5 for both the hip and knee. A gem from this analysis was learning that the gear ratios versus height was symmetric. Here the black line shows the line of equal gear ratios between the hip and knee. Here is an animation of our optimal 9.5 gear ratio for the hip and knee. In the torque speed curve, the purple dots represent hip actuation and the black dots represent knee actuation. The optimizer almost exactly matched the actuations for both joints and used bang-bang control, which is interesting and not what we expected. An interesting result that we didn't anticipate is shown here. At some point during the trajectory optimization, the optimizer realized the foot was about to leave the ground and it could get more height by putting the foot back on the ground and pushing off a second time, almost like a double jump. This is seen where the optimizer sends the hip torque negative right after the ground reaction force hits zero. There are still many directions to explore with this project. First, we notice that a hip gear ratio of 11 and a near gear, knee gear ratio of eight and a half, the solver consistently found a solution that jumped much lower than the rest. We think this is due to slipping. Searching in an area around the solution yielded no possible answers or trends, but it's important to realize the optimizer doesn't consider friction. We think adding friction is a good next step. Second, we think it would be interesting to find a solution that has asymmetric gear ratios between the hip and the knee. It is possible the gear ratios were equal because of the symmetry of the leg, so changing leg parameters to see their effect on optimal solution would be interesting. Additionally, it would be interesting to see if we can derive an analytical solution for the shape of a gear ratio versus max height curve based on inertial, geometric, and actuator parameters. And we would also like to expand this to higher order systems in the future. Thank you for listening.